All right, Lance, time for it. Score predictions. You just mentioned on our Bet Online read Tennessee, a 12 and a half point favorite right now. Um, kind of where do you see this game final score prediction and, and how do you get there? I, I think that Tennessee, it, it's very important for Tennessee to not be allowed to get out to a hot start. I think when you look at the Wildcats so far this season, it has not mattered who the opponent is. It was even a, an issue against Youngstown State. Kentucky has had a terrible time so far this season getting out to hot starts. They've been a slow first half team. If Tennessee is able to throw a couple of punches early, t- Kentucky can certainly adjust, but it is going to be a hole that I don't think they have necessarily had to climb out of against a team of this caliber yet this season. So I think it's imperative that Tennessee is not allowed to put up 14 on the board in the first quarter. I think that's very important that, that Kentucky gets a couple of stops. I don't think they do that. I'm not necessarily projecting this to be a blowout, but again, like I mentioned, Tennessee's rush defense statistically has been sound so far. Like you mentioned, even against a team like Alabama, they were able to hold Jameer Gibbs at certain points in that game. I think that tells, I think that speaks volumes as to what they could potentially do against, I think arguably maybe a slightly weaker offensive line uh, in Kentucky's Jeremy Flax, the right tackle is coming back in this game. So I think it's going to be big for the Wildcats and what they want to do on the ground. But overall, I just don't like the way that Kentucky matches up on offense and on defense uh, in this matchup against the Volunteers. It's a road game. It's going to be tough. Really, really difficult environment. I like Will Levis. I like what he is as a potential pro prospect, but you see every now and again what he does whenever he is under pressure, and it's he, he just makes mistakes. He creates turnovers. And so I'm, I think that's definitely a concern in this game. Like I mentioned, though, Kentucky is a solid second half team. They have been able to adjust in the past. And so I think that is going to keep this game closer than what it could potentially be. I'm going 38 24 in favor of the volunteers in this one. And I I think that Tennessee has the ability to score more. Um, And I definitely think that Kentucky has the ability to maybe wear down this team as this game goes on and maybe make this a little closer than some people might expect. But again, I think that Kentucky not being able to get off to even decent starts, uh, I think at points this season against bigger competition, it's going to rear its head again in this game. Yeah, uh, I couldn't agree more. And Tennessee gets off to really good starts and it has so far this year. It did last year at points and times, and it was always that second quarter to where Tennessee would kind of go into a lull offensively. Now, so far, that's not really been the case this year, and that that's it's so it's been it's been really fun to watch. Um, Alabama's defense was not as good as it has been under Nick Saban, but still, I mean, it was the number one defense in the SEC coming into that game, number one against the pass, Will Anderson Jr., all that type of stuff. And I mean, Tennessee just beat the crap out of him, man. I mean, it was it, it was it was it was interesting to watch to see just kind of how far the Tennessee football team has come. I think that I think Kentucky's defense is really solid. I think the middle layer of that of that defense and you know Jacquez Jones and obviously you've got DeAndre Square. I think they're really good players. I think they're pretty decent off the edge and right and and JJ Weaver. Um, I, I think this is a solid defense. But so far through everything I've seen from the Tennessee offense and quarterback Hendon Hooker this year, nothing slowed them down. Right, and, and I know it's not going to be perfect every single game, and I know eventually somebody will figure something out and and and, and it won't. It won't be like a walkthrough every game, you know. You know? Um, but I just I don't know if it'll be this Saturday. I don't think Tennessee will score fifty, but I, I I think Tennessee can score forty. I got Tennessee in this game forty, um, and I got Kentucky about twenty eight. Uh, Kentucky's good enough to score on Tennessee's defense one hundred percent, but slowing the game down, there's going to be less possessions. That's going to be key too for both teams. Obviously, Kentucky's used to that because of the pace of play, but for Tennessee as well, you can afford to go three and out. You can't afford to turn the football over, right? Um, there's going to be less possessions, probably two or three less possessions in this football game than normal, less plays. So you got to make the most of it. But I like Tennessee about 40. I like Kentucky somewhere around 28. Uh, again, I'll continue to go back to what I said. I think Tennessee should win this game because I think Tennessee's playing much better. But if Tennessee comes in and beats themselves with penalties and turnovers, which it hasn't to this point, Kentucky is certainly a good enough football team that's it will it, it can't beat you but you and i both have tennessee winning by you know somewhere around you know 12 to 16 points or so um where does kentucky you know overall so far this season what have you thought about the wildcats i know le- getting levis back was very critical um but is he even 100% right now 
Uh, I think he's close to 100 percent. And that's something that we didn't even discuss when talking about matchups with this no. game is that that, you know, Will Levis's health, I think, is also something you have to pay attention to in this game. I think he's going to be able to play play the entire game. Don't get me wrong, but he is not sitting, I think, at 100 percent right now. But he, he he'll he'll fight through it. He's a tough guy, really competitive guy. So he'll be able to go out there and play. And and honestly, him sitting at what? 90 85 percent is probably better than what kentucky has sitting on the bench right now so i would take that i'm very very comfortable with that uh the final thing i would say here eric you know just talking about how these teams are stylistically just so different from each other you know you look at alabama and i keep going back to that alabama game you look at the way that alabama made tennessee pay whenever they made mistakes i think kentucky is capable of executing whenever the opposition makes mistakes, but they do it in such a different way. I'm curious to see how Tennessee handles that because like you said, turnovers, penalties have not been a huge problem this season, but the way that Kentucky goes about executing off of those different things, I think is different than what Tennessee has seen this season. So I'm not going to sit here and just say it's all doom and gloom. Don't get me wrong. Kentucky has a chance to win this game. As it's a, it's a reason why the, the line hasn't ballooned to, to 21 plus, but like we've said, the Vols should win this one. I think it's a, it's, it's not a favorable matchup. They have not been poor in terms of, you know, mistakes so far this season. So I think it's a volunteers win and, you know, looking at Kentucky season so far, I think the biggest shock to me to kind of give you an answer to what you asked a minute ago is the offensive line. Yeah. I mean, pass protection has just been abysmal so far this season. And it was not something I was expecting coming into the year. I mean, we got a couple transfers that I was excited about. The left side of our line is something that I was really excited about with five-star Keonta Goodwin coming in. He did not progress through camp uh, as strongly as I thought he would. And he is currently right now sitting at second uh, in the depth chart at left tackle. So I think he may at some point this this season. And I'm going to continue to say that he's going to get his, his moments. Uh, to see if he can actually go out there and execute. But yeah, the offensive line has kind of hindered this team's ability to do a whole lot. And then also, you talk about this team being sound and being able to actually go out there and execute from a schematic standpoint and being being well coached. They've had some really weird problems on special teams so far this season. And so you talk about slow starts. I mean, you look at Kentucky's first half drive charts, and it's almost the same tune every single week. It'll be a missed field goal. It'll be a fumble. It will be a field goal just randomly in there as well. And it's just going to be st- – it's just it's just not consistent uh, on special teams. You've also seen blocked punts. You've seen muff punts. Uh, you've seen just a lot of different wild things from that unit. So, yeah, I, I think that there were a lot of promising things said about this team heading into the season that have kind of been done away with because Kentucky has shot themselves in the foot over and over and over again and i keep going back to that old miss game in my mind thinking man if we had won that game what would this team look like now and what would their aspirations be you do have barry and brown though what an There's exciting two- freshman there at receiver and in the man. return game he is a middle tennessee native yeah man dude i'll tell you what if we're going to talk about positive for the wildcats the receiving core dane key and barry and brown yeah they are going to be very special players for the future of this program well, Tennessee and Kentucky, it's coming up on Saturday, 7 o'clock on ESPN. It's the long-standing rivalry in the Southeastern Conference, the battle for the beer barrel. Not anymore, but to fans, that's what this game is, and it'll be another rendition of the Wildcats and the Volunteers in Knoxville coming up Saturday at 7 o'clock. Hey, continual coverage from Locked On Podcast, uh, Locked On Balls, Locked On uh, Kentucky, Lance Daw, Eric Kane. If you're a Wildcats fan, if you're a Vol fan, you want any more information before kickoff, check out our shows. Uh, we both spend a lot of time, detail work. Lance is one of the best in the network and doing uh, doing his homework and getting on there and and coming to the coming to the yard ready to play, right? Uh, so, you know, we, we both take our time, put on some good shows. So if you're listening, you want more information, check out our shows. That's Locked On Vols and Locked On Kentucky. Lance, appreciate it, man. And uh, we'll see how Saturday goes. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on, man.